Hey, Owen, can, can you just, uh, in, in recent weeks, you've done several interviews talking just about how excited you are about this opportunity, but it, can you kind of go from there and just address w what you've done with your sobriety and counseling to, to allow you to reach this point and, and just where you feel you are on your journey back right now? Yeah, so it has been a journey indeed, and the journey that I'm grateful for, I've had um, time to really um work on myself and take um take advantage of all the support and things that have been offered to me and the way i looked at um where i am now to who i was in the past i was a you know a young 12 year old or you know young teenage boy in a man's body so i was a man on the outside but a boy inside and the way that i handled the issues life and everything was in that immature manner and that was, um, uh, you know, fear-based and, and just uh, not handling things the way that I should have. And with the time that I've been, uh, that I've had to work on myself, it's a, allowed me and given me the chance to grow into the man um, that I am now. So the man on the inside fits how the man on the outside looks. And um, it's just given me um, a new perspective outlook on life. And it's allowed me to do things like, be able to return to this sport um, and feel like I am um, ready to give it all. At what Although, point what do you, you credit for that growth? What was that? I'm sorry, yes. Uh, what do you credit for that growth? Where where did that come from? Um, well, it comes from within. I think for me, but like with most people, I think if anybody really wants to change, it comes from within. And so I got to a point where um, – I was fed up with how I was living my life, and I knew I needed to change if I wanted to be something and and get my life uh, just get get back a hold of my life. So, um, I had people around me that was supportive, and I was willing to um, trust those people to help me out and guide me in the right direction. Was there a moment when you said, "You know what? Enough is enough. I need to turn my life around." When did where did that come? Where did that start for you? Um, there were a couple moments, but I think the, the, the last year, um, my grandma passed last year and that was, some, she was somebody who I was very close to. And, um, around the time she passed and my life wasn't where I wanted it to be. And, um, she was, um, somebody who meant a lot to me. And, um, I remember the last time we spoke, she had ALS. And so she, she passed at an earlier age and she, you know, should have, and um, ALS, it takes away a lot of your, your body's function, so she couldn't speak, but before the last time I seen her, she was able to, you know, get some words or get a message to me, and that was just, you know, do better, and, and basically go out here and get what you deserve, and um, that stuck with me, so that, her passing, along with me being totally defeated and surrendering to the problem that I had with my drinking, I was ready to turn my life around and um, I was happy that I had a place to go and people around me that were willing to help out. Alden, did that come immediately after that or did it still after her passing or did it still take you some time to reconcile that, that you had to be uh, approach things and do things a little bit differently? Um, no, it, it wasn't, it was really, it was time. It, it wasn't something I thought it was, it was, um, it was something that I was ready for and I, I was ready for it. When did football, when did returning to football become a possibility in your mind? Was it, was your focus just to live your life? live a better life, not about football. Uh, when did those two things kind of merge again? I think they, they, they merged together pretty quickly. Um, one of the things that I, I was trying to figure out is, um, you know, what was my purpose? I think I, I lost my, I lost my way along the way and I wasn't sure um, why I, what my purpose was. And I, I, no, football is one of my many purposes um, that I'm that God has put me here. And so once I was able to do some self 
um, self-reflecting and, and self-work, it was like, what are the things, what am I good at? What am I grateful for? And obviously God giving me this gift, this, this talent and um, chance to play. I was like, I'm going to go out here and give it a shot. I mean, it's something that I'm good at. I enjoy doing and something that I didn't finish the way I wanted or just finish in general. So um, it was like, as I'm bettering myself, you know, you're bettering yourself in all areas of your life. And that was just, it only made sense. When you what, ran do you, into what do you McCarthy think you can last, still? When you ran into Coach McCarthy what, what, last December, uh, did you think that, oh, maybe I could get back, you know, in the league again? So when I met um, Coach McCarthy in L.A., um, I was just sharing my story, meeting somebody who I had um, previously, you know, played against. But I was just meeting him and, and just having a conversation. When I when I meet people or when I meet when I met him it was I was just sharing who I was, what I had gone through and my story with him. What do you think that you can still contribute and, and how do you think that you'll be able to get acclimated back to the NFL game after having several years off? I still feel great. I still feel young. I still can move well. Um I still have a great knowledge of the game, if not a better knowledge of the game. Um, I learned a lot from the guys I played with in California, and they taught me a lot of good things. And, um, you know, I know how to be a leader. I know how to win. And um, also with our, everything that I've just gone through and learned throughout life, I feel like I can be a um, a source of, you know, people can talk to me about whatever they need. And um, so I'm just looking to, offer be a help on the field and off the field. What are some things you learned from Jim Tomsula and your time together with the 49ers and what excites you about being reunited with your former coach here in Dallas? Yeah, um, getting back and being with Jimmy was um, definitely exciting. Um, we had a great time together with the group of guys that we had and the success that we had there. And um, I, I just love how Jim allows us to go out and, and be free on the field and, and not feel like we're in a box. So um, joining him, I'm just looking forward to what we can do with these good group of guys that we have here. How much did All that the influence Cowboys. your decision to play, to, to join the Cowboys, e either meeting with Mike the way you did and, and knowing that Jim was here? What, what kind of impact did that have? It had a, it had a, a big impact. Um, it just seemed like the best fit. Um, being with Jim in San Francisco, him being here, the meeting that me and Mike had, and um, the way that, that that went seemed like we, we clicked the first time we talked. And then just the overall group of guys that we have here in Dallas, it, um, it all played its part in um, me wanting to be here. What do you feel will be, with this prolonged layoff, what do you feel will be what will you be looking at in yourself to gauge just where you are physically as far as coming back? Um, I physically feel great. Um, I obviously haven't played football against other guys in quite some time, but I will know the first couple of days or times I put on pads and compete where I stand, but um, I don't, I'm looking forward to it. Alden, the Cowboys took a chance on somebody coming off a domestic case with Greg Hardy. It did not end well. How can you reassure the organization and the fans that uh, with your history in the San Francisco case that this will be different? Um, well, my situation, I am a much better version of who I was um, in regards to that case. Um, that was something that was unfortunate. Um, and if anybody's willing to look deep, I have never was physical with, with that woman. And I just want everybody to know that I don't stand for being physical with women. Um, so I'd, I'd like to make that clear. But as far as um, what I can do is I can just continue to keep being the person who I've become to be. And that's somebody who I'm proud of, somebody that the Cowboys thought it was good taking a chance on and somebody that the NFL thought was good taking a chance on.
And as long as I keep being who I am and growing into the man I am becoming, um, I think everybody will appreciate the decision of uh, letting me back and, and having me. Were there any other teams you were considering, or was it just the Cowboys? There were a couple teams I was considering, but um, this seemed like the best fit. What's this week been like to be in these meetings with, with, with your some, maybe some guys you know or a lot of guys maybe you don't know very well? Um, it's been good to just be around other football players, um, be in the environment, the locker room, and just be in the building, <laughs> um, uh, just see guys. So um, I've met some of these guys, you know, at, at games, et cetera, but um, everybody's been really – been really genuine and looking forward to, to playing some ball with them. I don't know if you how emotional how emotional was it for you when you got the word from the NFL that you were reinstated? Um, it, it, I was really excited. Um, I'm I'm just looking forward to being able to go out there and show and, and show what I have. Um, because there's been a tremendous amount of people who have had my back, supported me through this process, and um, have been instrumental in me getting back to where I am. And not only do I want to do it for myself and, and everybody, but it, just for everybody who's had my back along this way. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You had a, a real infrastructure in place there in Los Angeles between where you were living to where you were training to make sure that you were working toward being – you're the best version of yourself. What sort of infrastructure is in place here in Dallas for you to continue that? Um, nothing's really changed. Things are the same, different locations. But um, I have I have a support system here in place that I um, feel like have uh, my best interest in mind, and um, things are going well. Alden, uh, two things for you. One, if you could tell us your grandmother's name, if you don't mind, if that's okay. And then two, uh, Jay Glazier among those reporting that in the gym, your weight might be up to as much as 287 or something like that. Can you give us your, your uh, physical stature, if you please? My grandma's name is Julia Edwards. And um, right now I'm weighing in at around 285 pounds. Do you want to play at that weight or what might might that go down a little bit? I feel fast. I feel good as long as my weight doesn't it's it, it's a it's a very fit two eighty five. <laughs> Let me just say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you play at before? Um I think I may have played two seventy. It just depends. My weight is always kind of been something I haven't had to worry about. So, yeah. Had the luxury of being able to eat what I want and still go out there and produce. When you were away, did you follow the game at all? Or was, did you follow football when, you, when you've been apart from it for so long? Um, it went in waves. Um, there were times I would pay attention. There were times um, – I wouldn't, so it just went in waves. Well, then you were talking earlier about how you kind of look back and you were a 12-year-old a or a teenager in a, in a man's body. You, you're obviously been very self-reflective during this process to get back to where you are. When you look back on that, do, do you recognize who you were before? Do you feel like that person at all? Do, do you feel that you... I guess, how, how do you reconcile the two, where you are now and, and who you were then and what you were doing then? Oop, it looks like we lost. Let me try and dial them back real quick.
called me there. Yeah. Hi. Right. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, Alden, you, you were saying earlier when you, you were kind of like, you felt like a, a 12 or a, a, a teenager uh, in, a, in a man's body. And you've been very ref reflective getting back to this point. When, when you look back on that period now in your life, do you, do you even recognize who you were? Is it, is it difficult to reconcile who that person was versus the, the person you, you want to be becoming right now? I think um, I do recognize it because I understand what that person was going through um, and just not knowing it or being ready to handle the tough things that I needed to handle to get to where I am now. So, um, because it gives me a greater appreciation for who I am now. If I didn't, if I was so quick to forget about, you know, where I, where I came, um, I don't think it would matter as much to me. Alden, the odds can be pretty long on getting back where you were after this long out of the game. Do you, do you think about that at all? Or do you just, you talked earlier about feeling so good. Do you just, you feel like physically you're at a point where you're going to be able to beat those odds. What are the odds? I guess we've not seen a player oh, have sorry, four years sorry, off. I, I had myself on mute. Sorry about that. Yeah. I mean, four years away from the game, it, you know, guys can be out a year or two and it, it seems very difficult to get back. I mean, this is a, a pretty long layoff. I mean, I guess you're answering the question. I know you don't really look at those odds. I just wonder how you view that kind of thing. I don't think about that. I I know how I feel. I know what I'm capable of doing, and I just plan on going out and executing what I believe I can do. Alden, you mentioned your support system, and, and that you know, it's not much different here than it was in, in California. How much do you feel like at this point as you've matriculated through this this comeback and, and trying to be a, a better person, how much do you feel like you rely on that support system now? Or do you feel like you've gotten to a point where you can, so to speak, do it yourself? Um, so I'm not trying to become a better person. I am becoming a better person. And with the help of the people that have been in my life, the people that have reached out, and with me just wanting what's better for myself, um, that's been able to happen. So I, I continue, like, the journey to being a better person isn't just, you know, so that I could get back and play football. It's something that I think everybody should have is just to be a better person. So um, I will always reach out and use the resources that are available to me. And um, when I have an issue or even when things are going good, I will bounce ideas, thoughts, whatever it is off of those people because they've had my back, they understand what's up, and I feel comfortable talking to them. Do you have anything else for them? No? All right. Thanks, Alden. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Alden. Alden. Appreciate, Appreciate your time, Alden. Thank you. Thank no you.